Today's video is sponsored by Landair C. Keep tabs on all your valuable assets from the palm of your hand. Remember, with Landair C, theft is temporary. Visit LandairC.com to order your Landair C GPS unit for your classic vehicle. Hey guys, how's it going? My name is Jeff with Classic Cars and The Journal, and today we are here outside of Legacy EV with President Maverick Knowles. We're gonna be taking a walk through the, the tour, essentially, of your guys' facility, right? Yeah. Take a look at some of the vehicles and talk about Legacy EV, right? Yeah, welcome guys, we're glad to have you. Sweet, let's go ahead and let's take a look. All right. All right, so. Intro, where are we at here? Yeah, this is the Legacy EV HQ. This is our conference room, internal meetings and meetings with customers. And uh, we got some admin offices up here in our front desk. And then when we walk back here, we've got our bullpen or we've got our sales team, applications engineers, product support specialists, education team, everybody. Wow, it's a good sized building already. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty big. We filled <laughs> it up pretty quick too. <laughs> Yeah, so this is where our sales team works, education team, support engineers, everybody. How many uh, employees do you guys currently have? At right now we've got 12 full-time and about 15 part-time. Okay, wow, that's, yeah, that's pretty good because you yeah. guys have been in business since? Yeah, 2019. 2019, wow, that's a yeah. very short amount of time yeah. in business. Yeah. It's impressive, quick growth. Yeah. Yeah. Sweet, all right, what's next? In here we've got our kitchen. And then back here, we've got our warehouse. It's not really anything great to go in the kitchen other than our yeah. custom Legacy EV coffee mugs. Oh, you can't pass those up. Yeah, so this is our warehouse. At Legacy EV, we focus mostly on parts distribution and education. So this is where most of the business happens. This is where we're shipping all our parts out of. We provide fully integrated EV systems to convert any vehicle to electric powertrain. Um, and then we also provide education and just one-off parts. So if somebody needs a new maintenance switch for their EV, we can ship them that all the way to, if they need a full power plant to take out the gas stuff and put an EV, we can help with that too. So are you guys able to swap any car into an EV or any battery plant? What's, how does that work? Yeah, yeah, just like you can pretty much LS any car, you can also EV any car. It just <laughs> might take a little bit of creativity or ingenuity to make it happen, but yeah. And you guys have a couple different battery motor options as well, right? Yep, so yeah. So we work with like 60 different manufacturers at this point. So we've got several different motors that we offer, a lot of different batteries, different chemistries, different motor compositions, all that stuff. So how do you normally, I guess, go about recommending what EV package for somebody should yeah. choose? Well, we've got a pretty expert sales team that can help people figure out what's gonna work best for their build. Usually starts out with defining what their needs are and what their performance goals are for the vehicle. And then they can help you know, diagnose and figure out what's gonna be the best power plant for that build. But we've also got a vehicle search feature on our website. So you can go on and just search your make and model and it'll show all the compatible kits that go with that vehicle. Okay, and then you guys even have some calculators to give some people some rough performance characteristics as well, right? Yep, yeah, we've got a range calculator and a top speed calculator. And the top speed calculator is interesting because when you're doing an EV, often you're gonna go down to like a single speed gear reducer. And so you wanna make sure that the gearing in the rear end is gonna be right to make sure that your top speed and your efficiency speeds are all good. So you can type in what your gear reducer is gonna be, what motor you're gonna use, what your rear end ratio is, and your tire size, and that'll tell you what your speeds are gonna be for top speed and then most efficient. Okay, and so if someone was interested in taking up a legacy EV kit, what's the best way to sort of go about finding yeah. a way to get it installed? Yeah, so you can reach out to us at info at legacyev.com. You can give us a call. Our number's listed on Google or on our website, or you can just go to our website and start searching and having fun doing some research. Okay, cool. Yeah. And if there's a bunch of different shops that can even get authorized to start installing some of these kits too, right? Yeah, definitely. So like I said, our business model is parts distribution and education. And so with that, we're actually not doing conversions for customers. Mm -hmm. We're training our customers how to do the conversions themselves. And then when people come to us and want an EV converted, we send them out to one of our authorized installers. And so how many, do you know how many you guys have off the top of the head and where yeah. they're kind of located? Yeah, we've got over 40 all around the world, everywhere Holy from smokes. South Africa, Costa Rica, Florida, California, Alabama, 
everywhere. Oh, wow. So what are, I mean, that's, that's crazy to think that it's already like kind of a global thing, but yeah. where have you guys, what sort of vehicles have you seen swapped? Is there like a sort of common trend or? Yeah, I mean, we're seeing everything swapped right now. I mean, even when you just take a look around our shop right mm -hmm. here, we've got an old Model A sedan uh, converted with a Cascadia IM225 system. Um, and then over here, we've got a Ford F100. On the other side, we've got a 356 replica. Then on the other side of that, there's a new F-150. Um, so pretty much anything can be converted nowadays. Um, different vehicles have more proof of concept out there. So, you know, like for Volkswagen Bugs, they've been done for a while. So you can pretty easily get like a transmission adapter plate and they're pretty quick and easy to convert. You know, battery boxes come ready to go. You just put in Tesla modules and you can convert it pretty quickly. And then, so you mentioned a transmission conversion plate. So yep. you can actually use some of the standard transmissions and yeah. kind of mate them to the electric yeah. battery, so to speak. Definitely. The two most common routes for conversions are either a gear reduction box, which is actually this piece that you can see right here in the Model A, just this little billet casing. That's a um, planetary gear set. Um, there's also helical gear sets as, gear sets as well, um, but that's a three to one gear reducer. Um, so those gear reducers are one of the most common options. And then the other common option is just a transmission adapter plate, which basically would just make it so you can mount this motor directly to the manual transmission. Um, and then you've still got all your speeds and can work through the gears. So obviously this is a super compact uh, system to put inside yeah. of a vehicle, right? So yeah. um, obviously on the hot rod, it's, it's very low key, but in some other vehicles, like some bigger things like trucks, for example, even SUVs, do you guys ever find people having more storage yeah. um, afterwards after installing some of these? Yeah, definitely. Well, like the stacks on the big block that used to be in here came up above the window. So mm. like you'd have to like try and look <laughs> above them when you're at a stoplight to see through. Um, but yeah, the motors take up way less space. So they often get sucked down in the trans tunnel. We left this motor pushed forward so you could see it. That's kind of like the hot rod yeah, style, right? Yeah. You want to show off the power plant that's in there. But if you look at the F100 over here, um, the motors on that one are totally sucked down in the trans tunnel. And so now the whole engine bay is open for batteries. Hmm. Um, so you can do like, sometimes people do a front trunk or uh -huh. a frunk um, because the motors are now down under and then you can put the batteries where the fuel tank used to be or in the bed of the truck, lots of different options. But now right here, we've got Tesla modules. So there's 10 Tesla modules in here and then five in the rear. And then the motors are actually down under in the trans tunnel. Um, and you can actually see those in the cab of the car. There's a glass panel that you can look down on and see through there. And then just out of curiosity, um, being new to the electric engineering space, just yeah. like, what are the, why are all the orange wires always orange? Yeah, on the yeah. EVs? So it's actually like a federal regulation. I think okay. it's FMVSS 305 states that <laughs> you gotta have all high voltage cable be orange in color. Oh, and okay. that's so like EMS, fire safety, or anybody repairing the vehicle knows like, there's probably high voltage running through this line, so you should right. be careful if you're gonna have to cut it. Okay, so that explains it. But in this instance, it's a nice match to the color of the truck. Right, right? yeah, it works really well. <laughs> and we even kind of did the same thing on the Model A over there. All the uh, emblem on the side is orange. Ah, okay, and then this one has like a special EV emblem on the side, right? So yeah, it's E100? yeah, it does. Yeah, right over here on this side too, it says E100. And now this truck was built by 101 Motors, which is one of our customers, but the truck belonged to TFL Truck, their YouTube channel, um, and they do a bunch of OEM truck reviews and a bunch of other stuff as well. But uh, you may have seen this truck before on their channel if you've been on YouTube and seen it, but um, this used to have an inline six uh, gas engine out of like an old dump truck. <laughs> and it's actually on an F-250 chassis. So it's already kind of this like Frankenstein of a bunch of different really cool pieces of history, but the old engine was getting tired and they needed to replace it. So took Tesla batteries and then net gain motors and built the power plant for this one. Um, now it's got 600 foot pounds of torque. Holy smokes. Like 280 horse, um, way more than it did as a gas power. Yeah, power. that'll that'll move. Yeah. It'll move pretty good. Yeah. So you guys have a bunch of different components here that are more than just batteries and motors even. So what all yeah. kind of goes into some of these kits? Yeah, well there's like 50 or 60 components that go Holy into smokes. a conversion. You gotta source parts from probably at least 15 different manufacturers to make one working power plant. So it can be kind of overwhelming and that's really where we wanted to step into the space. We mm -hmm. wanted to integrate all the components you need to make a conversion version into one simple kit. So we ship it all out on one pallet and the builder knows they've got everything they need to do the conversion. Okay. Um, so yeah, we've got some net gain motors here. Um, those are the Hyper 9 units. We've got Cascadia Motion, uh, Zonic, which is a new motor, Danfoss, or UQM. Um, and then we've got a bunch of AEM controls over here as well. Um, and then yeah, just a bunch of other Thunderstruck chargers. 
die long chargers, a bunch of other stuff. And so you guys offer a couple different kits too, right? You offer yeah. kind of some economy stuff for maybe somebody that's not looking for a total hot rod all the way up to yeah. maybe even supercar right. type performance, yeah. right? Totally, yeah. We've got 12 standard kits that all have like 16 different variants. By the time you look into like how fast you want to charge, how much battery capacity do you want? What kind of transmission do you want? So the options are really endless once you start going down those rabbit holes, but lots of different options. Okay. Cool. So, and then over here, we're starting to get into some of the training stuff, right? So you yeah. mentioned the 356 earlier. So what's going on here? Yeah. So this 356, this is one of our training vehicles. And so it's not done yet, but the idea here is this is a replica. It's actually on a Vita bug pan. And so we'll be able to lift off the lift off the body and have all the components just mounted to the frame. And then you can see how they're all fit within the vehicle. Um, and we'll bring it to all the trainings that we do, which we can talk about more when we go into the building next door too, and show you some of that stuff. Um, but yeah, and then we got more parts over here as well. Laser cutter for R and D doing some prototyping and different stuff like that. Um, yeah. It's so really, you guys do everything in these buildings or set of buildings here as yeah. far as legacy EV goes and yeah. prototyping things and all that. Right? Yep. Yeah. We've got some people who work for us remote and do different things, you know, sure. PR sales, stuff like that. But for the most part, this is the central operation. Yeah, this is a pretty sweet gig you guys got here, especially with uh, surrounded by all these vehicles. Yeah. This is pretty sweet. Yeah, we don't necessarily need to keep them in here, but it makes it a little bit more fun being able to look at the cool cars while you're shipping out pallets of parts. <laughs> so out of curiosity, what do you, you know, when people are looking for an electric conversion, what do you find is generally the reason they decide to go this route? Yeah, there's lots of different reasons. Um, I mean, there's the sustainability move. Um, mm -hmm. So when you're taking a vehicle that's on the road and you're making it into an electric power plant, you're actually saving some environmental cost by upcycling the vehicle that's already there but mm -hmm. it's mostly performance these things just perform and that's what people are most excited about mm -hmm. um, and if you've never ridden in a tesla p100d and felt the ludicrous mode like it makes sense why maybe you're hesitant on the ev movement sure but once you feel that instant torque it just changes things it's so fun yeah that's pretty sweet yeah okay so um, I guess I had another question too about the performance kits. Do you guys offer different uh, rear wheel drives? Like obviously some manufacturers do four different motors to all four right. wheels. Yeah. How does this, what range of options, I guess? Does yeah. This have? Yeah. So we've got transaxle motors. Um, oh, wow. So you okay. can do like a, even a Tesla LDU, um, you know, that's transaxle. Um, and you can do a motor in the front, motor in the rear. This one here is a dual motor, but they're actually in line. So one's a dual shaft motor and then one's a single shaft and they're actually mated together and they go straight to the rear end. So pretty much any drive type we can accomplish whether it's front wheel drive, rear wheel drive, four by four, part-time four by four, any of it, we've got different motors that can accommodate those vehicle setups. We're really just trying to adapt whatever was there as a gas power plant mm -hmm. into using that same system as an EV. Essentially preserving the same experience of the vehicle. Yep, exactly. Yeah. Um, do you know by off chance if any of them make any different noises, right? Like in some of them, uh, some people imagine like yeah. and sounds and things yeah. like that when some of the EVs take off. Is yeah. there any difference in that between motors that you guys have seen? Yeah, that's a good question. It does sound a little bit different. I mean, different motors like have different RPM capabilities and then different mm -hmm. gearboxes too have different sounds. So like, okay. I think if you use a planetary gear set, it's like pretty mechanical yeah. sounding, like you can hear it. Whereas if you use a helical gear set, it's a little bit quieter. Um, but yeah, for the most part, I, I haven't heard it too much. They're quiet enough. <laughs> yes. You hear a little They're bit of a hum yeah. um, and it's kind of cool. But other than that, I'm not sure. Okay. So we talked about training next, I guess. So should we yeah. head that direction? Yeah, then? sure. Let's go check it out. Sweet. Yeah, that's fine. You can put it in. So this is our training and R&D facility, and uh, we've got some R&D projects going on right now. So it's just a little bit scattered, but we'll still show you around. <laughs> So this is a newer F-150 that we're converting, 2019 or 2020, I believe. And this is getting a Cascadia IM375 system. So you can actually see the motor ends right here. So it's like way back into the trans tunnel. And this is an 800 volt system. So it's gonna wow. put out a lot of power um, for the small package. And uh, yeah, it's just like this big right here. And then if you spin, <laughs> scan right there, we've got a, the ice power plant still um, took up a lot more space. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And then that's the hot rod motor, I'm guessing, that's up above there. Yeah. Yeah. That's the old big block with the super tall stacks on Which it. Which is at least two to three times the size of oh, the electric system you guys have. Easily. In there, yeah. Easily. 
Yeah. Holy smokes. Yeah, so this is an example of a type of build we do do internally at Legacy EV. We're typically only taking on builds that have some R&D value um, or PR value, like Project D. E. Mm -hmm. It's always going to be R&D, but it's also super flashy. That's a beautiful car that we love to take around to shows, so we'll do those kind of builds internally. And then these ones, there's uh, yeah, new technologies going into this car. Um, that we can't talk about yet, but we'll be excited to talk more about in a couple of months. Yeah, so I mean, really, you guys are not only offering training for people to start heading in the direction, but you're showing what can be done with the technology as yep. well, right? Exactly. Yeah. Very cool, very cool. Yeah, and now we can come up here and check out our education room. So, these are some of our test benches. They're still getting built. So this classroom's a bit of a work in progress at the moment. But the idea here is we've got a one week training where we can bring in new techs and we can teach them all the basics of EV with a hands-on and product agnostic approach. So basically this is an entire EV system that is sitting on this table right now. And students get to come in and wire everything in a very safe environment because it's all out on the bench. We've got it all set up sequentially so students know exactly what the step-by-step -step process is. But they get to actually get their hands on every component and wire it all together, program it, commission it, and then test it and tune it even do fault finding activities. So we'll go mm. through and we'll engineer common faults that we see in EV systems. And then the students have to go diagnose that with their multimeter, find out what's going on and then repair it and get the system functional again. Um, so we've designed a full curriculum around these benches where students can come in and learn all yeah, the basics. That's incredibly thorough. Most, yeah. uh, most people would stop short of testing people for <laughs> uh, finding the problems there. So not only are the companies essentially authorized as installers, then they're also authorized to go and repair the vehicles should anything happen, right? Yep, exactly, exactly. And all of these are product agnostic too. So we've got different systems on each bench. So, you know, you're not just working with one like DC brushless motor, but you're working mm -hmm. with three phase permanent magnet motors. You're working with AC and a bunch of different technologies to make sure that you're really understanding how all this stuff works. Wow, yeah, you guys, so this is some of the components earlier when you mentioned that there were 50 to 60 different yeah. things that go in. This is yeah. a good idea of all the components that can fit into it. Totally, yeah, we've got an onboard charger here. So this is what's taking your power from the grid and putting it into AC power so you can feed your battery pack. Okay. Um, and then we've got our uh, DC power, I should say. And then this is our DC to DC converter. So this is stepping down high voltage power and putting it into your low voltage battery. So this is like replacing your alternator, basically. Oh, okay. And a gas park bar. Yep. So we've got a relay blocks here. And then we've got a bunch of battery management systems. And then this is a, mo a master control unit. So this controls your batteries and your EV charge controller. Um, battery watchdog. So this is if your 12 volt battery is ever getting low and the car's not on, it'll actually switch on the DC to DC converter, charge your 12 volt system. So wow. there's so much nuance that goes into it, yeah. but that is the beauty of working with a kit provider. We've figured out all the headaches so that builders mm -hmm. don't have to go through, my battery died, like what's going on? And we're like, oh, well, you gotta get a, a battery watchdog in there and that'll help solve that problem for you. Yeah, wow, that's, that's impressive. Literally got everything. Yeah, yep. yeah, little fuse holders, big fuse, fuse holder, contactors, another relay. Here's a box that's got your uh, FNR switch, so your forward neutral and reverse, as well as your ignition switch, and then your drive mode selector. This one will be drive mode selector, so you can go eco mode, sport mode, and performance mode. And then the motor will basically change its torque curve to match whatever drive mode you're feeling. So now generally this is all focused towards authorized installers, right? Shops and mechanics and things like that. Yep. If someone was interested in learning more about how to, as I guess, work on EV vehicles or even get into the EV space, is there an avenue that you'd suggest or do you guys have a training program for that? Yeah, yeah. So we've got a fully virtual and self-paced training program that okay. builders can do, or you don't even have to be a builder. You can just go get trained and learn about EVs. Mm -hmm. We also do weekly webinars. So you can hop on and just attend one of our webinars and learn more about some of this stuff. And then we've also got a bunch of partner schools. So we're working with the Shelby American Automotive Program out of Northeast mm -hmm. Texas. They've got a one semester course where students are actually converting a car from gas to electric there. Um, and we're working with a few other schools as well um, and plan to be working with more in the future. Yeah, it's fantastic, it's fantastic. So uh, this is the end of the building pretty much, right? As far as the right. end of the tour goes? Yeah. Okay, cool, cool. And then if people want to find you guys, what uh, sort of social medias and things like that are you guys all on? Yeah, we're on Instagram, legacy.ev. We're on Facebook, you can just search Legacy EV. We're also on Twitter and TikTok. 
Legacy EV, and then LegacyEV.com is our website. Yeah, and you guys have no shortage of media articles. Yeah. Plenty of yeah. YouTube videos and things like that to cover you guys with. So uh, with that, that's going to be the end of the video, and we'll be taking some look at some more vehicles later, of course. Um, but if you guys like that video, go throw a like. We'd really appreciate it. And get subscribed as we release videos like this regularly. Thanks so much for watching.